This NFL picks week seven edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by the SGPN merch store. Use the promo code NFC Beast for 15% off. Active until the Eagles or the Giants lose their next game. Hey, everybody. Joe Theismann here. You're listening to SGPN. So do this. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second that money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Well, hello, Sean. Hello, Ryan. I uh, was uh we we had some updates to the soundboard yes. and I realized I was stuck on the wrong page. Had to get back on the Kramer Dog page, aka the main <sighs> page. Uh, we got a we got a bunch of uh, new sound drops adding to the old uh, the old little uh, the old repertoire here. First off, Ryan, you are now laser focused. And uh, shout that out again. <laughs> nice. It feels like a pretty good laser sound effect. And then shout out to Jason Johnson who sent us the Benedict Dance sound effect. Ah, oh, look, it's Benedict Dance, aka Colby, aka guy who picks both sides of the line. I could see him wearing Filthy one of those Union Jack. one of those coats that has like the two uh, the tails, the oh, old yeah. the revolutionary style. <laughs> oh. I feel like I'd be more of a Bill the Butcher. Bill the Butcher? Yeah, you know, gangs in New York. Oh, okay. If I was around those times, not one of these pussy ass politicians wearing <laughs> wearing tails on their coat. Uh, all right, let's go. Oh, we already got uh, YouTube chat is alive and well. Colby is my dad for 20 Kramer. I need to buy a new battery for my car. So let's hear the lock please. Now last. Oh, whoa. I mean, come on. We, we just started yeah. having a conversation here. Well, you, you, it's like you're, you take the girl out to dinner Jesus and you're, you're already Christ, asking dude. for uh, you know, you know, you know what? sometimes penetration can hurt you. A little uh, conversation wouldn't kill you. Yeah, you know, it might look, might give you a better hit rate in your personal life. <laughs> no offense. You gotta wine and dine before you get no. the locks. And we we're coming off the Sunday pregame show where we won Magic Man Blanco uh and his family just had a uh, a new kid and we family. won them that we hit a formula parlay for uh Magic Man Blanco. So let's go, baby. Let's fire it up. Which that's why you gotta tune into the pregame show. Exclusive. Exclusively on YouTube, call in on Discord audio. We are exclusively presented by WinBet. That's right, baby. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. I think this weekend is the weekend you join WinBet's biggest winner club. Whoever hits the biggest parlay on WinBet odds wise gets a thousand dollar free bet. Last week's winner of the biggest winner uh, club, New York better, who hit a plus fifteen thousand parlay all on live. Money lines wagering $110.40 to win $16,743. Truly a hashtag uh, DGEN's only play if I've ever heard one. Hashtag DGEN's only. So much to choose from. And again, all you got to do is go over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. Offer subject to change. Uh, must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through internet is available. If you're someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Let's go, baby. I see a 6 and 0 in the chat. I, I don't, is that, uh, do you think they're referring to a streak of my lock selections? Probably or, talking about the maybe, Philadelphia okay. Eagles. Ryan, I, I was doing some uh, deep diving on the stats, the picks, the nuggets, the trends for week seven. Came across this uh, mm. little nugget. 
Jalen Hurts did not attend Robert Kraft's wedding. Jalen Hurts six and zero oh as a starter, baby. Fly Eagles, fly go birds. Wow. Okay, so maybe the, to know when to come. The Kraft wedding was the problem. <laughs> uh, and uh, and I missed it last time. Where uh, it is interesting that the uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks lost to a close your eyes special because that's actually what Robert Kraft orders Ooh, when he's down. Woo-hoo. But he's down in Florida. He asked for the close your eyes special. I have a feeling his eyes are wide open. He probably is a guy who (laughs) likes to make eye contact while getting his Uh, massage. Yeah, I mean double entendre, perhaps. All right, working there. Let's Uh, go, baby. Yeah, I mean just uh, just another week. We got four buys: Buffalo, the Rams, Vikings, and of course your Eagles. So three of the best four teams in the land with the five win club. (laughs) <laughs> on by this week. Biggest winners club, Ryan. Uh, yeah, they probably, uh, well, it's, it's uh it is the five win club for a reason. Eagles are just slumming around New Orleans, All right. Thursday night. Let's get it started. Saints, new Orleans. They're heading to Arizona where the Cardinals are laying two and a half minus minus one forty on the money line. Saints plus one 15, 44 is the total. Sounds like neither quarterback is going to carry an injury designation yeah. for the saints. And Oh, by the way, it sounds like ta- maybe, maybe a good dose of Taysom Hill at quarterback. Too. I mean, if there's ever an excuse to get the coach's son involved in the game plan, the fact that James Short week. and Andy both dealing with injuries, I, it sounds like by all accounts, Andy Dalton's going to get the start. Yeah. But again, Andy Dalton, not a hundred percent on the road. Uh, that is not an Andy Dalton. I want to bet on. And if you missed the prop show, we did a special um, episode dedicated just to the Thursday night props. So Michael Thomas out, Jarvis Landry out, Marshawn uh, Lattimore's out, Andrus Pete, the guard, Adam Troutman out. They're really, really banged up. But Sean, we're supposed to take the two and a half, right? Well, but it's uh, two. That's the thing. It's, is it? Oh, I just saw it was two. I don't know. Uh, uh, breaking news? Did they move it back well, to two? Just, and, oh, I'm, they moved it back I'm, to two and a half. I'm All right. Uh, you're you're supposed to take the two and uh, it, the, the Saints are so banged up. It's a short week. As you pointed out, Dennis Allen not first time coach, but first year coaching this team. Although the establishment should be there, but Kyler Cliff horrible at home typically. Kyler Cliff, we I mean this is the unknown, right? Like they took the claws out of the contract, and here we have it: a new Call of Duty <laughs> being released this Thursday ahead of the game time. My my theory, we kind of talked this out on the Thursday night props episode, but the theory to me, it's it would seem like if he can't get access to the game, which by the way, the more I thought, I mean, maybe he can. If he can't get access to the game to the morning of, I don't think it impacts his play. I think next week's there, there's there's potentially a problem. This is a weeknight. We kind of workshop this, right? He might be a good weeknight player potentially. The the hit the past doesn't suggest that's true. Cliff has never won on Thursday night. Uh, this is a this is the classic case of I don't want to bet on either team, which makes it no. a, a, a great Thursday night football <laughs> yeah. game. Thursday night football is home to two teams you want nothing to do with. D hops back. That's the difference to me. Yeah, no, I mean you look at uh, Kyler's splits with and without DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. It's massive, even though they're bad at home. Even though they've just been bad overall, I think you have to take the Cardinals. You can't take the Saints team on the road because. We saw they I, have been a good road team with Peyton and and the and crew in the past, but yeah. But I, I think this unit. is a completely different Saints team, a Saints team that figures out uh, ways to lose. I'm not I'm not going to bet on Andy Dalton dealing with a back injury, an old quarterback that's kind of washed up, but it has been playing decent enough. The Saints defense has been really bad. I mean, you saw what happened. Jamar Chase just went off, and and. Yeah, like the Arizona doesn't have a great offensive line, but neither did Cincinnati. I I think the I think the Bengals and Cardinals kind of share some similarities here. Saints are 28th in pressure rate. So, you give That was Kyler, the narrative last week, right, with the Bengals. Yeah, you give them, them enough time, something bad is going to happen. They're in home, they're at home in the dome. I certainly don't like Cardinals for the first half, but I wouldn't be surprised if they get right in the second half. Maybe Robbie Anderson has oh. a play. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly. To me, this is all about just D Hop coming back. Maybe the offense just works better when you have someone that resembles an alpha on the outside, and specifically with this Saints team. The- I, I think Arizona is kind of the more desperate team. 
they've won, uh, or they've lost a bunch of games at home here. Uh, as Allen's pointing out in the YouTube chat, a uh, Cliff Kingsbury is now the second is like the next coach to get fired yeah. odds wise. God. He's got to realize he's playing for his job. He reminds me of like the evil. Uh, he's got the look of like the evil ski instructor in one of those eighties <laughs> movies. Cause he's got like, you know, wear like a tight black turtleneck and like have shades on. He he's like, you boys are ruining the mountain. We used to have, this is, a, should be about skiing, not partying. I just, uh, I, this is just a great opportunity to fade the saints. I just yeah, don't see it for the like, saints. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'm, I'm all Jawan Johnson. I do like if he missed the prop show, uh, Cardinals are horrible against the tight end. Jawan Johnson, his he's priced super low. I think he could have a nice game. Uh, money, uh, New Orleans is catching. It's not like alarming, but they are catching more of the the uh, tickets and the money. So, uh, look, uh, yeah, I think I think Arizona is the right side to take here. I think the it's the pat it, it, the, the matchup is the pass defense. It's for the same reason that uh, a Bengals team that's been pretty mediocre all year looked pretty good at times. Yeah. And you could still say probably should have lost the Saints, but yeah, let's take Arizona. Kyler gets it done. He, he, I'm telling you, he wants to show everyone he's not addicted to Call of Duty. It's a true, it's a true narrative. Wouldn't that have been the narrative week one? All these other weeks, but now the everyone's fucking tweeting this out. Everyone's <laughs> like, oh, oh, Kyler, look, the new game's coming out. Everyone's like, like Sean, you know when you can get advanced access, yeah, to the game. Why yep. do you know that? Because, because of Kyler's Kyler. exactly addicted. Sunday. 10 a.m. on the West Coast, Detroit coming off the bye, heading to Dallas. Dallas laying a touchdown, minus 320 on the money line, 255 for the Lions. 49 is the total. Kind of feels like the typical Campbell, Goff, dog spot. I, this, you know, Detroit would have been a close your eyes special, but they, we went to a buy, so it nullifies it. But there is still that like lingering devaluation. And I mean, uh, I'm on raw looks to be fully healthy Dak. I still don't think is completely a hundred percent. He took most of the first team reps, not all the first I team love reps. This. I love this. I love that. They're like, and, and, and the Cowboys were winning. Why? Because they were playing good defense. They were running the ball and they weren't turning team it over. Ball. Then they ran into the buzzsaw ing, known as the Philadelphia Eagles, Ryan, who turned them over a bunch. Okay. And, and Dak with this weird thumb injury was really, I, I think is really at high risk to turn the ball over. We saw he actually had the same thumb injury as Russell Wilson, right? And the, that thumb injury Russell Wilson had last year for the Seahawks. The, and there was a big difference between pre Russell Wilson with thumb injury and post Russell Wilson with the thumb injury. This is also, and it sounds like he's trying to rush it back. Like uh -huh. Steven right. Jones is the only one that's saying, Oh, I don't know. Dax with Dak wants to play. Jerry wants him to play. Well, I mean, if you're Cooper rush, I think you actually want him to play and be like, see that guy sucks. Dak, Put me back in. Of course he wants to play. Jerry's the crazy man. Like the, the, the kid Jones is probably the rational opinion here. And I, I just love this. I, I love the idea of Dak coming in here in a game where they don't need to, they, they probably could take care of the lions without Dak. Yeah. Play the ball. They've been playing that, that defense is going to be probably uh, gougeable on the ground, which is the scary part. Yep. But I, you know, I, I think they just seem to find a way in the back door on the regular. Um, <laughs> You know, sometimes penetration can hurt you. You just so you found the way into the back door. I mean, right. I, I, I am seriously worried about Detroit's defense. They are dead last in the league, allowing six and a half yards per play. They're dealing with injuries. They just lost one of their defensive tackles for the season. Is this is this us, us fading the Cowboys? Are we are we us fading the Cowboys? And you had a great nugget uh, that you spent a long time mining deep in the data mines, Ryan, about dogs coming off a bye since 2020. I mean, basically since 2020, why? Because that's when the CBA changed the rules about what they could and couldn't do on the buy. So th basically if you're, if you're a dog, you're coming off the buy, you're catching seven points or more three and one ATS since 2020. Now, now if you draw that back further, 15 and nine. Now where, where's my good nugget, Sean? I have too many. I would numbers just look here. at like uh, just dogs coming off oh, the buy since 2020 or 15 right and eight ATS. There you go. Like I said, as you make it a bigger dog too. the key dogs of seven or more dog, you basically want to, the, the lesson dog. there is you play the money line six and three ATS four and five straight up. 
look, I, I don't really like Detroit here on the money line, but I do like the angle of bad teams coming off a buy getting a little bit of extra love on the money line. Well, or on also, the, on the if, spread. if any team can kind of cover uh, the back door with some garbage scores, I think it's this Detroit team. We've seen that a number of times. That's the way you play it. You just, this is just a, you take the lions as a dog here. Yeah. Plus, uh, plus, we, plus we, I don't think the, you know, uh, the Cowboys strength is the defensive line. And while I think they're, they're still going to have some success. The lions have a decent offensive line and we've seen them play pretty well. PFF has them currently as number nine and in the offensive line ranking. So I think they'll be able to do enough and two weeks. You would imagine they got something and I'm on Robbie and fully healthy. I think is huge. I mean, that's his guy, but I think you, you nailed it, right? If the offensive line can neutralize the pass rush and, and this, this Cowboys defense is it, like, they're not Dan Campbell's covers spreads. He doesn't win games. Take, yeah. Take the but game. you know, God help us. If this is like 41 to 10. All right, but but yeah, also just like reiterating that the team when Dak comes back, does the team play harder or less hard? Like, is it a good like? Do they feel like oh great he's back, or is it like we got to play hard because this fucking Cooper Rush guy sucks? Yeah, I don't know. I I think it's the their style of play. Like they played conservative, ran the ball a bunch, gave Cooper Rush stuff like easy stuff, made his job easy. The defense carried him. We'll see if that happens when Dak comes. It's just gonna be great if Dak can't win games. We just we keep every week we get to say I mean, how if Dak, this team is winless if Dak with Dak loses to the Lions. <laughs> God help you, because I'm gonna be loving yes, it. Yes, please. All right, next up, another early kick. The Giants head down to Jacksonville. Minus three for the Jags, minus one sixty five on the money line. Giants plus one thirty five. Forty two and a half is the total. I mean, obviously this stands out when you see a team uh, like the Jags. Uh, laying points against a five and one team. No like the respect, right? Have they not Giants. heard about winning culture? They haven't heard about winning culture. They also haven't heard how many obnoxious people from the Northeast live in Florida <laughs> and are now all in on the New York Football Giants again. And we'll be at this game. Uh, essentially, I can't figure it out. I, I think this is telling me that the Jags are because I don't think they get a home match. So you're saying the Jags are three point better on a neutral this field. I, a, what are what am I what am I missing? Is this an eye test versus the fucking spreadsheet situation? Is that what we're dealing with here? This is a Courtney Love game, Ryan. This this line the is, line stinks. This line is so stinky it makes me want to take the Jags. Even though <laughs> that's even though before. I hate taking the that. even though I hate God taking the Jags, Jags as a favorite. Jags are twelve and twenty five against the spread as home favorite since two thousand eight. Cool. And, and you can you can blame it all on uh, Urban Meyer. It's a large data set. It, it's just it's a non-winning culture that perpetuates Jacksonville's can, can entire I, city. I'm gonna zoom in on what you just said though. Last four times they were favored. The only four times they were favored since 2020. They're 0 and 4 straight up, losing those games by an average margin of over a touchdown, Sean. There's not we we already had this spot a couple against the the I mean this just well, happened. Deion Jackson uh for the Indianapolis Colts just destroyed the Jags. The Jags are bad against running backs and that's really like the one thing the Giants have going for their offense oh, is Saquon Barkley. Oh, wow. You haven't seen Young all Joker. the all the efficiency that Dan Jones is playing <laughs> with. No, Tops I mean, in EPA per drop back over the last 3 weeks ahead of Josh Allen ahead of Patrick Mahomes. The offense is working. The running game's working. The defense is coming up with big plays. And, and you're that, telling me Goldilocks is going to outduel Wink Martindale? The only angle that makes sense here is a letdown spot. A number of those players were on Baltimore. That was a big revenge yeah, spot. Wink, big win. But smelling themselves, reading but their You press heard clippings. the fucking owner. The same owner that said, fire my fucking deadbeat brother. I don't give a shit. Fire everyone, Joe Shane. Fix the culture here. You know what he said at the owners' meetings when they asked about the hot start? A John Maris, someone who always likes to talk to the media, he goes, We're on to Jacksonville. <laughs> uh Doug Peterson. One Doug, week at a time, Sean. Doug, Doug Peterson does have a good record against the Giants. I don't think that's <laughs> I don't think that's nothing. Be honest. You watch this Jacksonville team. You see a team that's that's ready to do something? No. And that was my angle when the Eagles played them. They you're just like, won. oh, they're playing for Doug P. They're they uh, see a I, man, the leader that's that gonna... was a revenge spot. He got five he got wronged by the Eagles. Uh I, I think honestly it comes down to Wink Martindale loves the blitz. A uh, Trevor Lawrence can't figure out the blitz. Like if you bring pressure 
on Trevor Lawrence, he can't handle. So last week I told you he wasn't doing crazy amounts of blitzes. So in one game, he brought the Giants up to the most the most blitz happy team because he blitzed Lamar sixty nine percent of the time. Nice. I, I, that what does that tell you? I expect a similar. If he thinks he can get you off your rocker with the blitz, yeah. he's gonna come hard and heavy. And and I think. So you were saying Trevor's he struggled against the blitz, right? Yeah, that's okay. why I'm saying uh, they're going to get some turnovers by blitzing Trevor Lawrence. The running game is the part. Like ETN seems like the kind. Con- like Kenyon Drake gave them problems last week, so that yeah. that would be the angle. Uh, give me the Giants plus three, obviously. <laughs> Colts. I'm on the Giants. Really? Bucket. All that? And you? I thought you were, you said you were going to Courtney Courtney love your no, way. No, I think into, it, I think into the hot tub and and take I, the. Jags. I think it stinks, but I I don't I'm not that kind of gambler. I don't bet just based on the line. I'm an eye test. I'm a football handicapper, Ryan. Live it, love it. I, I you know. Dan Jones, four and zero straight up as a dog this year. Fourteen and six ATS oh, in his they career. They continue to be better on the road uh, than this they are. This is not a new thing. All right, Indy, the Colts, ah, oh, the AFC South. Here you are heading to Tennessee, coming off the bye. Tennessee minus two and a half, minus one forty five in the money line. Colts plus one twenty. Forty two and a half is the total. I was working on a beta version of the AFC South flow chart. And what do we learn about this matchup road team? When they play each other, take the road team period. Yep. Uh, again, we'll, we'll have the flow, flow chart published Indy, hopefully in a week or two, Indy, but India is eight and two straight up their last 10 games in Tennessee. And you know, they they're coming on. And one of those, they actually lost in Indy or sorry, in Tennessee last year. So whatever it is about the AFC South, there's a blueprint we've been given it. And Ryan, Going back to that uh by uh the by stat and seven trend. and three ATS in those, by the way. Yeah, in their eight and two straight up. Uh doesn't really matter here because they're yeah, a dog, but right. um fade favorites. So we were saying take uh dogs coming off a of buy, but on the other uh, s- side, obviously you should fade the favorites coming yep. off a of buy. Since 2020, favorites are 14 and 24 against the spread after the buy. The 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 thing that scares me to hear. Is Vrabel is good off a of buy for no ATS, but really the Titans they don't have Traylon Burks. Like I don't understand how they should how they're throwing the ball. Like they they really should have lost that game against the Commanders if it wasn't for uh, Cancer Carson. They this, would have lost that this game. This game strikes me as a game where they like Tennessee wins by a point. Yeah, <laughs> Indy it, it could get wonky. Uh, Colts are also getting some guys back. Seems like uh, Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines are looking to play. They may be getting Darius Leonard and Quiddy Payback as well. This actually a fun other little nugget is this is the only game this week with two winning teams going head to head. Uh, th- the other thing that scares me is That's Matt Wild. Matt Ryan on the road. I wrote what could go wrong. He's not been great on the road. No. Frank Reich has been though. Four and one to, as a divisional dog. ATS. Indy, if you look at their yards per play stuff, eighth defensively, only allowing five point two, and you know they. <laughs> it's just it's so like I did it last week. I bet on Matt Ryan and I won. Do I really? <laughs> do I really want to go back? We're to gonna the well? stare the. I know yeah, I was on this very show and said I'll never bet on Matt Ryan again, <laughs> but Here we are. I forgot about the AFC flow chart, which guides our picks. Yeah. I I really like this. <laughs> I really like Indy plus two and a half here and. Uh. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but I think money wise, everyone's on Tennessee, right? Uh, the the larger we haven't come across a game that has a massive uh, discrepancy, okay. but Tennessee sixty forty, we'll call it. All right, next up, Atlanta heads to Cincy, where the Bengals are laying six and a half, minus two ninety on the money line. Falcons plus two thirty, forty seven and a half is the total. I understand Atlanta is six and zero ATS, and there's all this historic shit like. On the horizon, the, the only four teams have started a seven zero ATS in the last forty years. Last forty years, one of them, unfortunately, was last year's Cowboys team. Sean, <laughs> the the two thousand eighteen Chiefs that is a disgusting act. The O eight Titans and the O seven undefeated until they faced the New York Football Giants, Patriots. So uh, that that they're one cover away from being that. But once again, they're catching all these points. They're gaining zero. Like there's no, there's no money pouring onto them. This isn't moving the number. The spread isn't four this week. It's six and a half. They're begging you. They're begging you to take the bangles. I honestly, I'm done. I'm done. 
this, I, I, this is exactly what I said would happen. Exactly. Arthur Smith knew what he was fucking doing. Mariota's doing it well enough. These these teams, both of them, only play close games. It feels like uh, Bengals in you know four games have been decided uh, by a combined fourteen points. Like six I, and a half feels like a huge spread for a Bengals. I Bengal hate game. that I faded this team. The last two weeks, dogs of four points or more, sixty-seven point four percent this season. So they came out and punched the Niners in the fucking mouth. So what? What is scary here is that again, Falcons don't have much of a pass rush. I love which, this team, which is which is which sets up perfectly for Joe Burrow. The yeah. the other thing is the Falcons cornerbacks they've done pretty well against number one receivers. So I think maybe they slow down Jamar Chase enough and T Higgins. Is not a hundred percent. That could really limit things. I did. I read a little. I mean, I do think there is. Uh, yes, they don't have a great adjusted sack rate, but I do think they could pressure in the same way they were able to pressure Tom Brady a little bit up the middle. I think they're going to be able to pressure Joe Burrow in the same way. And Joe, th- like they're they're just broken up front. They're just a broken team. So I don't think you need to have an elite pass rush. Uh, we like again. New Orleans does not have a good pass rush. Their defense is not playing well right now, and they were still able to make some stops when needed. So I'm done. I'm done thinking, oh, it's not smart to bet on a six and zero ATS team. Give me the dog. Give me the Falcons. Sean, I'm my 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 ticket. My re- So the, the other thing that I'm nervous about is one, I've been kind of fading oh, no. the Falcons and they've been showing up. Now, this time when oh. I jump jump on the Falcons, they're gonna let us down. The the other thing is this is a non conference road spot dome team going outdoors isn't this what we typically fade here? But they're not a dome team. They run the they throw the ball fourteen times. Matt, they're running triple option. I I think they're they're never going to be respected because are they not a public dog? No. Okay. No. If they're not a public dog, they don't have fleas. I'll take Atlanta. Let's go. I, I, I'm, I was, you know, l- last week with the way they went after San Francisco in a spot that San Francisco had, has done well, that double East coast game, they have done well. We told you four and O ATS four and O straight up. So for Atlanta to come out and play against a team that plays with physicality and like knew that they were one dimensional. Yeah. I, I, uh, I like, I like the Falcons. Fuck. Hopefully we didn't jinx them. <laughs> I don't care. I I I find this Falcons team annoying. I have no problem jinxing so, them. So even at at a very like public book, I'm I'm seeing 55 45 in favor of the Falcons. Okay. So nothing But crazy. I'm also seeing some places reporting up to 60% on the Bengals. So I mean again, it's like it's early in the week, but I don't I don't think this is going to be a crazy public side. Ryan you know what? Uh, All the public should be pouring on no house advantage. That's right. You like player props. You like taking over unders. Imagine playing in contests where you can win up to $250,000 in cold, hard cash. Just playing simple over unders love. No house advantage. It's like player props mixed with DFS highly recommend it. And if you don't want to play in their big contests, you can just play against the house. If you go five and oh, you can win 20 X your money. Uh, it's it's a ton of fun. You got an NFL, NBA, MLB, PGA, MMA, NASCAR. They got it all. And if you head over to nohouseadvantage.com, use our promo code SGPN, you get a first deposit match up to twenty five dollars. That's nohouseadvantage.com promo code SGPN to get that first deposit match up to twenty five dollars. Make sure to check out No House Advantage today and experience daily fantasy sports redefined because it's not just how you play, but also where you play. You won't want to miss out on this. Also brought to you by Babel. May and Conta Babel. May and Conta gambling. Uh Babel is just great. I mean, it, for me, guys grinding tape, grinding research. It's nice to give your brain a little break from watching eight screens of uh action that you're sweating out over on God's eye and and do something constructive, something positive for your brain. You can do it in as little as 10 minutes a day. Next thing you know, three weeks later, you're having a conversation in an entirely new language. Um, it, it's got a sweet AI. They have speech recognition to help you improve your pronunciation and accent. 14 different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German. They got it all. And if you use our sweet link, 
You can get up to 55% off your subscription. That's babble.com slash S G P B A B B E L.com slash S G P for up to 55% off your subscription. Babble language for life. Sean, I actually, uh, I, I found, I, I know you've been working really hard on your babble. And mm. I, I was actually, um, you know, I don't think the most of the listeners don't know you have a second job. Great, great call there. That was the uh, that was Lamar Jackson throwing the interception to to love there against the Ravens. Uh, that's, that's how you know your team's doing well when you start getting the, <laughs> the viral Spanish. videos of the Spanish clips. That would be great if that was just like a two yard carry because that's a, that's what's great about Spanish announcers how excited they get uh, regardless of situation. Best in the business outside of Gus Johnson. Next up, another early kick, Cleveland. Coming off a of thumping, Sean, they are a close your eyes special. They, oh, under, they, they underperformed the spread last week by over twenty one points. They're heading to Baltimore. Ravens minus six and a half, minus two ninety on the money line. Browns plus two thirty. Forty five and a half is the total. I, I think the stat is the Ravens have only been trailing for one hundred and twenty seconds this year. It's crazy. They just keep figuring out ways to lose. And they're just a bad team. Like you, you got to be able to close out some of these games if you're supposed to expect me to consider you a decent team. Yeah, I mean they're they're the Bizarro Giants uh, by the numbers. They look incredibly efficient. They are. I think they're only they're they're close behind the Eagles when it comes to second quarter dominance and just in general first half dominance. And yet, you know, when the game comes down to it, and I've heard some kind of sports talk criticisms of Greg Roman. This is something that he's dealt with in the past. Look, I, I think this is about players not making plays like that giants game. That was just guys making it's plays. It's not about X's and O's, Ryan. It's, it's Jimmy. about Jimmy and Joe's and in cons- and this or, or Lamar's, <laughs> the, yeah, I was going to say Lamar's and Duvernay's <laughs> Lamar's and I don't, nothing rhymes with Lamar. Unfortunately, yeah, we might need an AFC North flow chart, Ryan, because the road team has covered 16 mm, of the last 24 matchups in this game. And that we, we see this all the time. The AFC North is always a close division. They're always pretty scrappy and you're going to give one of the teams a ton of points, AKA the Browns. You got to take the points here. I, I, you know, I think I do think the Browns should be able to run the ball a little bit. Um, I, what worries me here is it, I I'm, I'm obviously going to stay true to the close your eyes special. Yeah. But it, one of these six and a half point favors is just going to crush. But I, I like your point. Like divisional, uh, we saw well, Ra- we, Ravens we saw, are twenty fourth in rush DVOA. We saw uh, it with they the did o- They did okay against Barkley, but twenty fourth in rush DVOA. You bring in you know Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I mean, I'm sure in the Browns meeting room the entire week it's just been like, hey, we got to get the we got to get Nick Chubb the ball more. Like he's our best player. Give this guy the fucking rock because that that's really. Stay tuned. A big the reason episode. they got their ass kicked by the Patriots. They didn't feed Nick Chubb enough. And Lamar, he's seven and thirteen against the spread as a home favorite of three and a half or more, excluding Week One because usually the Ravens kind of dominate that. So that seems like a bit of an outlier. But man, just in general, he's thir- this feels like a horrible spot for the Ravens. Just in general, he's they're only thirteen and seventeen at home. I I mean I wouldn't lock this up because I do think there's a chance. Uh, Ravens really get up for this after the loss to the Giants, but we just haven't seen them play anywhere close to sixty minute game. Yeah. And the Browns are away from Brownie the Elf. Do you do you know who Baltimore has next week? Uh, it, Bengals. It, no, the Bucks, uh, which yeah. probably matters less. But it's Thursday, so just a tough uh, really they look ahead spots always hurt teams they they've had a tough schedule um but yeah close your eyes special here obviously and again the line is just why like why is this not i took this at 7 earlier in the week because i'm sharp thank you tampa bay another did early, you give it out to your clients i i i don't think i gave it out to my my clients are listening right now so they're getting six and a half. so wow bad Sorry, no. Call yourself sorry. a tap. We, do we have to start doing another er, show early <laughs> in the week, or it's just bets I'm making early in the week? Tampa heads to Carolina. 
I, Carolina's unbettable at this point. They're catching 11 plus 425 on the money line, minus 575. 40 and a half is the total. For a second, I thought Darnold might be in play, and I was trying to talk myself into how yeah. I could grab these 11 points. I mean, PJ mm. Walker. He's horrible. Was essentially knocked out of the game, or he was put in the concussion pro- protocol. He has a neck injury, and they're starting him. Like, there's just no hope for this offense. I understand they were on the road against the Rams. There's just not anything positive about this Panthers team. And I don't think Brady necessarily played that poorly. I know the narrative and it's fun to bust his chops is that he went to, you know, he went to the craft wedding and then uh, they didn't win the game. I think that's a little, a uh, little TMZ take, which coach I, is calling him out, which I appreciate. But again, he doesn't, he doesn't really lose back to back games a lot. I feel like this is similar to that year where they won the Super Bowl. They're struggling to figure out the offense early on in the season. You know that we all remember Brady holding up three when uh, it said it was four down, dummy. And then all of a sudden, it, everything clicks. They go on a massive run. I, I think this Panthers team. I mean, <laughs> the Rams' defense wasn't that great. The only touchdown they scored was a defensive one. I, I, PJ Walker had a negative average depth of target. So that means if you take all the times PJ Walker threw the ball in that game, the average depth That's, of that it's literally impossible. Uh, no, I'm telling you. No, I know. It's 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 it it seems fucking impossible. I would say it's probably impossible. Like that's that's it. That's just such a bad performance. How <laughs> how are you getting better? That like you're trading these players. Again, I don't think they're going hard. They they know they're not going to be on this team soon. They're openly yeah. talking about it. How, I mean, if there was Steve a, Wilkes isn't a good coach. Like I, either no one's if, rallying if, around. If him. there was a spot to say, hey, fuck it, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna show it. It was all Matt Rule that we're actually good players. That would have been last week. <laughs> the, the week after the the week the coach gets fired is when they really lay down. And I get it. You're at home. Yeah, they're just bad. They're just a bad team. You got to take the the Bucks here. It's scary though, right? Well, like I said, you know, uh, dogs have been great this year. It is double digits. It just feels like Todd Bowles is going to fuck this guy up. Yeah, like, it, this could be fourteen to zero. <laughs> Todd Bowles has looked pretty. I mean, pissed. what would you set Ryan? They're talking about Bruce Arians. If like, someone, like, hey, Bruce. if someone wanted to place a bet on the oh. on the Panthers team total through you, what would you set the line at? D- well. So I was looking at the. I was on V. We were talking about this, I believe, on uh, when I was on Vison. Shout out to another network. I know you love that. No free plugs. No free plug. They are not the favorites to have the worst record right now. Really? Mm-hmm. Who's the? Who, oh who do you God. think it is? It's Houston. Really? That blows my mind. They have Lovey Smith as a coach. <laughs> He's not dog. Have they seen Lovey Smith's beard? Guys, laser All focus. Right, so, three to one was the bet. Worst record, Carolina Panthers, three to one. Plus three hundred. Yeah. Right. Dog. That's a that's a seven to one. Yeah, that's I, a seven to one dog on a on a Sunday. I, I mean, where's the where's the hope coming from? Where's the like, hey, rookie quarterback um, coming? It, hey, like if they had Sam Howell, let's pull. Maybe you could talk me into some optimism for this Panthers team. I mean. Uh, I almost want to look at this. We uh, that this is almost worth worth an actual bet. All right, so they have one win right now. They have one win right now. I I don't know where the, the, they play. The, the, even Atlanta Texans are crush a them. half game ahead of them. I uh, this feels like something we should invest in. Uh, we got off track. Maybe be maybe this is how you play the Tampa <laughs> Carolina game. You just play Carolina to have the least amount of wins and be draft. Oh poor poor CJ Stroud. He's gonna have to be Justin Fields in Carolina. <laughs> Another yeah. Ohio State quarterback, slow processor. You never know. All right, so we're both on Tampa. Yep. Uh, t- Green Bay, Carolina is really gross. I it, four twenty five. All right, Green Bay heads to Washington. Washington coming off Thursday night football, a little extra rest. Uh, Carson Wentz, a little hand surgery, missing time. He probably will never see the field again as a Washington Commander. Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones. They're they're gonna Cancer simp- Carson has been removed. They're gonna simplify things. Minus five on the road, minus two thirty on the money line, plus one ninety for the commanders. Forty one's the total. Aaron Rodgers still hates the rest of his team. I, I don't think that's changed. That has not changed in one week. 
<sighs> and, and and Taylor Heineke kind of like Heineke one game bump. He'll use his legs. Uh, he'll he'll be a, so this is a kitchen sink game. This is Taylor Heineke's last. This yeah, could be rookies. Taylor Heineke's last <laughs> shot at the NFL. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Uh, all right. So when I first looked at this, I'm like, I keep going back to the Green Bay is not bad, right? Green Bay is not bad. Green Bay is good, right? But Aaron Rodgers doesn't like his teammates, like you said. He said yeah. this, the offense needs to be simplified. Yeah, aka everyone's stupid. Well, how about we just give Aaron Jones? Like if we the ball told Colby, times. like, hey, we need to simplify instructions for setting up the equipment here. Colby, do we need to <laughs> simplify that for you? Uh, I. I it's not a compliment. They need, but this could be a get right game. The Washington pass could defense be. is crap. It's on the road though. Yeah. And, but, and green Bay is not good against the rush, right? That's the only thing I can see. I mean, I'm I kind of like this to be one of those games. Heineke is going to use his legs a shitload. Yeah. He's going to evade a, a, the, the, the pass rush yeah, of the this green is Bay why Packers. I, this is why I'm on the commanders. Green Bay is 32nd in rush DVOA. This is a massive game for Brian Robinson. Uh, AKA dog. You don't think you don't think they're able to move the ball on him? I don't know. I mean, I want, th there's part of me that thinks that Taylor Heineke could just be bad. I and think he, Carson I, Wentz was on the field over him because he's not that well because they they traded they used two third round <laughs> picks on him. It maybe, but Ron Rivera doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's like, oh, I'm going to give you the spot because you didn't earn it because we traded for you. I don't know. I I'm on Washington here. Ron Rivera I seems like a guy who I don't love job. it because uh, again that we're we're now entering that realm of like well, what happens when Aaron Rodgers loses two in a row, you know. It doesn't happen very often. Left hand up. Who are we? The commanders. Come on, Ryan. We, we are, so we're really going to both pick the commanders right now. Well, you know who else likes the commanders? Ref Clay Martin. That's right. Breaking news from the ref report. Clay Martin, a huge, huge home ref. He likes the uh, he likes the uh, commanders. We're already on a very, very public Bucks team. All right, fuck it. Are the Commanders a public team? No, no. I was I was getting ready to pull the trigger on a Packer uh, going back to the Aaron Rodgers well, but you have to take the five points here. This kind of resembles the uh, Ravens Giants game last week a little bit. We'll see what happens. Jets. Uh, we're moving on to the afternoon slate, and we're heading to the mountains of Denver, where the Jets are heading to take on Russ. And the this team is so broken. Hackett is a horrible. He's, <laughs> I heard someone compare him to Adam Gase, and it's so perfect. Denver coming off Monday night, minus one, minus one twenty on the money line, plus one hundred for the Jets. Thirty eight is the total. the The Broncos legit have a great defense, and it's being wasted because the the head coach is a fucking idiot, and Russ is a giant pussy I mean, who is not Denver a leader is of men. Number two in defensive DVOA. To your to your point, like Nathaniel Hackett, they said he had a great conversation with Melvin Gordon. He, he's going to start against the Jets. Like this guy is just coaching for his life already. I've never, you know, dogs and NFL fan bases are the same. They smell fear, and the fear coming out of Nathaniel Hackett is is pretty pretty Jets are, bad. Jets are being bet. Like everyone is betting the Jets. This has been bet down from three and a half to now uh, as we sit one. Russell Wilson said he's hoping to play this week. Said he's feeling much better already. Said maybe he's got Wolverine blood. I would say Wolverines would be able to have uh, be better than twenty fourth in pass DVOA. A Wolverine could definitely see its check down option right in front of him, <laughs> five yards downfield. I, I I you know the I'm not a totals guy, Ryan, but the the totals like in the forties, which to me is insane. Have you watched Denver these game? teams play? For a Denver? I mean, Denver's defense is really good. What do we think the jet Zach Wilson's going to light it up on the road? No, no. I mean, I mean, you have to take Denver here. You just have to hold your nose and take Denver. What, we got a, uh, I, I'm not going to reveal. Well, and this totals 38. It was, it was like, it was higher than it was in the forties. I, mm. I swear if you were, if you were doing some sharp betting early in the week, Sean, you could have some nice CLV. Someone uh, hit up our Instagram with this uh, story about Russell Wilson. No yeah. idea if it's true, but I'm still going to read it on air. What's up guys? Not sure who or if anyone reads these, but just wanted to share a little anecdote about Russell Wilson being part of the problem. I'm a big Seahawks fan and in 2013 I was living in Bellevue, Washington. 
Uh, my buddy Paul uh, is from there. Went to a local sports bar with a couple of buddies to watch a UFC fight. Max Under and Russell Okun ended up sitting at the table across from us. Former offensive lineman for the Seahawks. Yep. Then, uh, then both starting offensive linemen for the Hawks pre Super Bowl win. Between one of the fights, a commercial came on with Russell Wilson, and very audibly, Max Unger immediately shouted, Oh, shut the fuck up! The few other people in that section of the bar were pretty shocked, and I couldn't help myself but laugh. From then on, I knew he might not have the best locker room chemistry. Keep up the Lord's work, boys. Gino's a dog and is going to keep crushing dog. overs. Yeah, I mean, it makes, makes you wonder if anyone actually went to his birthday party. No, no one showed up at his birthday party. Uh, it's weird. We loved Russ. We were, we were, we were, uh, we were tricked just like everyone else. Yeah. That's sexy ass. Well, Ru- Russ is like Tom Let's Cruise. Ride. Yeah. He's got that like <laughs> weird si- Scientology. Oh, so. yeah. Russell, Russell Wilson's not in Scientology because he hasn't found it out yet. Like, as soon as someone explains Scientology <laughs> to Russ, he's going to be all in. 110%. I mean, it makes me you reevaluate he, what I think of Ciara that she's like, yeah, I want to be married to Russell Wilson. You see the way he warms up on the field. Yeah. Denver uh, minus one, though, is still uh, the play. Like, yeah. I can't take the Jets as a public team on the road at elevation. I mean, I know they keep figuring out ways to win, but I just cannot do it. This is a tough spot. Tough spot. Another afternoon kick here. 105 on the West Coast. The Las Vegas Raiders coming off a bye, laying seven against the Houston Texans coming off a bye, plus two fifty for the Texans, minus three ten for the Raiders. Forty five and a half is the total. So this is the convergence of the two the two trends we were talking about earlier, uh, favorites coming off the buy since 2020, 14 and 24 ATS dogs, 15 and eight ATS. When you stretch it out, the trend gets even stronger in both, in both directions. So I, I think to, for me, like I'm, I'm obviously a Texans guy, just crazy how the Texans are still alive. Steelers still alive. Falcons still alive. all these crazy bets. I made still oh. alive. The Texans here. Th- this just strikes me as a great spot. I, I have not seen it from the Raiders yet. No. And, and, and Raiders are, they're a lot, a lot like the Bengals. Like every game for them has been a one scored game for the Raiders, except that game against Denver where they won by nine. Uh, but they certainly tried to blow that a number of times. Well, Raiders are fifth. Are 27th in DVOA uh, defensively. They are 15th in rush DVOA, which is obviously what the Texans are going to try and do. Uh, Darren Waller didn't practice today. I think that's going to hurt their passing game. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, I mean, you you nailed it. The pass DVOA, like this, we could be talking about a nice looking Davis Mills, Brandon Cooks, Nico, whatever it looks like. I, I there's no reason. I mean, if the Texans can't move the ball a little bit against this team, then we have problems. We sound the alarms and that's that. But <laughs> what are we going to do? Seven, seven points, seven points against a team that just leaves the back door very ajar. And frankly, like this Raider, I, I was high on this Raiders team. I've immediately downgraded them. I, I don't, I don't think this is a very good team. And Josh McDaniels is just a and, really bad coach. And they're dealing with the, you know, you have the criminal stuff with uh the egregious assault that Devontae <laughs> Adams committed in the in the soft ass city of Kansas City. Why at, all right, real quick, why is Adam Schefter reporting on this? Like, fuck you, Adam. I don't need to hear about Devontae Adams legal case where some pussy ass cameraman got in the way of a true alpha and fell over. That's not why are we wasting money? Public dollars. This is ridiculous. Houston plus seven. Pencil around this one. Las Vegas is not good on defense. Five point seven yards per play. I think this Houston team is going to be able to pound the rock with Damian Pierce. Like Damian Pierce is a confirmed dog. I think they're going to be able to move the ball against them. Cooks to have the most receiving yards this weekend. I might. I'm going to look. Oh, that that's up. interesting. I'm going to look that up. That's got to be like twenty to thirty to one. <laughs> Save he, that one for our props episode because I, I think know, that could be pretty he, good. He's been cold. Like, coming off the buy, they want to make him happy. They know he's an alpha. Just don't, you know. Uh, th- to, again, pencil around this one. This this could be one of those dogs. All right. Oh, what's this? Ho, ho, ho. 
Michael Myers sure is scary, but the last thing you need is to be hairy this Halloween. <laughs> Luckily, our friends at Manscaped launched their fourth generation performance package to make sure your pumpkin gets the ultimate carbon experience on this spooky day. Turn your bite sized treat, hey, come on, into wow. a king size candy bar. Now we're talking. And join the six million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com. Twenty percent off and free shipping with the code SGP. Make this <laughs> call. Make the right call this spooky season. It's trick or trim. I I'd say trick and treat your lady to a nice, well groomed pumpkin. Oh, uh, yeah. Obviously, Manscaped is awesome. Uh, you can seal the deal with their liquid, their crop preserver. Again, great. I, I know, I know about you, Ryan. Long stem on the pumpkin, right? I love, I love fall. <laughs> you know, you get that crisp autumn air, get a nice cider going. Time to harvest the crops, aka shave my pubes. Manscaped makes all that happen. Uh, Manscaped.com promo code SGP. What do you think fall? You think pumpkin spice latte and shaving your nuts? <laughs> Fubo TV. We're also brought by Fubo, oh, wow. poor Fubo TV. <laughs> now, uh, Fubo TV is awesome. You got the NFL Red Zone, college and pro football. We have Fubo TV here at God's Eye. Every once in a while, I mean, even God's Eye it sees all, but even God's Eye needs Fubo TV. Uh, you can watch on all your devices uh, with their cloud-based DVR, which is awesome. And Fubo TV free for seven days. Try it out for this football weekend. If you don't like it, you can cancel any time. Uh, Fifteen percent off your first month. Just go to fubotv.com slash sgp. That's f u b o t v dot com slash sgp. And also Odds Trader, man. Odds Trader is your one stop shop. You got handicapping, play by play updates, live scores, bet tracking. It's uh, you know, people ask, what do you go to? What sources do you use? Oddstrader.com slash blue wire. It's it's just the great place to start. It's simple, easy to use. The number one site for all your game day bets. Oddstrader.com slash blue wire. All right. Home stretch, 125. And remember, if you want to keep hearing the manscape reads, some yeah, of you guys let, have to let buy them know. It. You gotta let them know by it's not a free ride. <laughs> it's not a free ride. Performance art is art. Kansas City heads to San Francisco where the Niners just seem like they're a different team at home. Catching two and a half here, plus one twenty-five on the money line. Kansas City minus one fifty. Forty-eight and a half is the total. So are are we getting healthy as expected? Is San Francisco getting so healthier? Nick Bosa, Trent Williams, Jimmy Ward, Jason Ferret all returned practice in the in the same session. So to me, that is huge. I, and again, we saw this. In the game against the Falcons, they're a different team with and without Nick Bosa. I mean, those like yards per play stats, the the dominating, yeah, you know, number one a, DVOA defense. He's a beast. A lot of it runs through Nick Bosa. And and I shouldn't oh, have been Trent Williams. I mean, that's a big one too. He's yeah. a massive left tackle. And they've struggled it. And and you know, Kansas City can get a pass rush. Karloftis is real. Um it the, the what's scary is this is a good bounce back opportunity for Kansas City, right? Like Coming off three, that loss, straight up Mahomes off a loss. Really, I've tied. Oh, is that not what you have? No, maybe it was like eight and six ATS. Mm. Uh, this is certainly a small number here. Jimmy G though, sixteen and four ATS as an underdog. So we, we have some converging dog, dog. trends here, Ryan. I I would look to the money split, and from what I'm seeing, the Chiefs are kind of a public oh, team. Of course, because the the easy public narrative is them coming off a loss when. To me, this you look at the Niners and you just look at a, a, a team, a tale of two teams, and they're coming off a game that in hindsight, m maybe they punted on that game. I don't know. Who? The, the Niners. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it certainly didn't look good, so perception is down on them. They weren't quite a close your eyes special. But Look, the the I don't think the public is thinking very highly of this Niners team. And to your point, hopeful I don't know how many of those guys will ultimately play, but the idea that it sounds Bosa, pretty good. That, I that, mean, at least Bosa, I think. The idea that they could both be out there, both tr Trent and uh, Nick, we're on a first name basis. Then, then I I it, the contrarian in me says, you know what to do here. Take the two and a half. Don't take the money line. This is just like that fucking Colts game. This this reeks one point win from Kansas City. 
I'm taking the 49ers. The Niners are just a team. You look at what they've done at home. Seattle, 27 7. Los Angeles, 24 9. They're just a great they're team. They're a different at home. team. And in so we we talked about how East Coast back to back trips when they hang out in West Virginia, they bro out. They were four and zero straight up, four and zero against the spread until they played this Falcons team. They were very banged up. We understand, right? It it, it was just maybe they, they they maybe they just couldn't do it. Well, in the game where they come back after that, it's it is it is not it has not been a great spot for them. So there's also that where I I worry that okay now they're back they're dealing with the old lady. It's like the NBA long road trip thing. You want to fade them on that first game back. To me, I, I, I'm gonna we're gonna feel stupid that we faded. We took uh, Jimmy G against Patrick Mahomes. I, that that's the the worry here. But this is like a spot I want. I want to be on this side for the tease. I, I think Jimmy G just shows up better when he's got the protection on the blind side. Yeah, and uh, I don't know what Kansas City's gonna do about Debo. I I mean, just in general, I, I don't know. Dog. I don't know if their defense is is at a place where they're going to be able to handle that running attack. All right, Seattle, heading to Los Angeles. The Chargers off Monday night. Nice win. San Diego, Four. Super Chargers, charge. It's, now Keenan Allen's talking like maybe he won't come back. Oh it's really? After the buy minus six and a half, minus two sixty on the Monday Wait, night. Chargers are going into the buy. Yeah, Seattle oh, plus two ten. Do we miss any of the other teams that are going? Fifty one is the total. I I thought I listed it off at the beginning of the show. Let me let me pull it up. I got it right here. Uh, we got Buff Buffalo. No, Buffalo's on the buy. Hmm. I don't have it. I got my grid right here though. <laughs> we got Kansas City. Oh shit! Chargers. Shit. Do we need to revisit the Kansas City game real quick? <sighs> No, because I'm gonna fade the Chargers here. So fuck it. Are you sure? Fuck that trend. Yeah. Fuck that trend. Kansas City is the public team. Yeah. So all right. So we're we're holding strong I'm with saying, San Francisco. I'm saying with the 49ers. Okay. You can you can do uh, whatever you want. No, no. I that's the right side. Uh, Char. Uh, so Seattle plus two. All right. So Chargers minus six and a half, minus two sixty on the money line. Seattle plus two ten. Fifty one is the total. Seattle has the better quarterback. They have the better defense. They have the better head coach. And you think I'm joking about the better quarterback? Completion percentage, uh, interceptions, QB rating, yards per attempt. Yards per attempt to me is like the the most important like QB stat, uh, rushing yards. Like Geno Smith is better than Justin Herbert and all of those. Like the the offense is running well. To me, this is a massive, massive Ken Walker game, Ryan. Because how do you beat the Los Angeles Chargers? You run the ball. And Ken Walker could have a massive game here. Then you set up very easy opportunities for Geno Smith. Get him going in the play action. Chargers are making missing their kicker. I mean, uh, this they got is, another kicker that made uh, kicks last time he played for him. Okay, in, yeah. In, well, in some kid off YouTube. I only know that because of fantasy. I <laughs> he went three for three. I think last time he. Uh, but stood you know in. he's gonna mess this up. This is classic. Uh, Los Angeles Chargers. We are supposed to fade them when they're at home. That is, yes, a, that is they're a bad at home. Sixteen and twenty-four against the spread in Los Angeles. Herbert as a favorite of three or more. Seven and eleven ATS. Geno Smith is good against the blitz. That's what the Chargers are going to try and do. Uh, and then this rookie cornerback for Seattle. I'm surprised he's not getting more buzz for rookie of the year. But Tariq Woolen, uh, four interceptions and two fumble recoveries. I know Seattle has had their issues on defense. I think part of it is they're super young, and I think this is a get-right spot for the Chargers or for the Seahawks defense. So, so you're not, see, I, I think maybe they can pass on them a little bit, but I think again, you know, you're on the West Coast. I think Seattle's ready for this game. Maybe Seattle smelled themselves a little bit, but I, I, I don't see it. Do you, Do you think Seattle will have a big crowd down here? Oh yeah, there's a ton of Seattle people here. Yeah, yeah. I mean that because that, that's the easy Alaska Airlines flight, Southwest <laughs> flight. That's the principle, right? Like you're not supposed that they they have not. I, mean, I don't know. I, I think I wouldn't be surprised, especially because the Seahawks are better than people thought. 
and it's kind of an F you to Russell Wilson. I wouldn't be surprised to see the chargers have to use a silent count at home again. This is the most lopsided bet game. Really? Seattle. Wow. Really? Yeah. I'm still taking them. I I want I, why do I do this to myself? Yeah, give me Seattle. We're supposed to fade LA at home. I really wanted to take the Chargers there. Seattle's got to not be good at some point, right? San Diego Super Chargers charge. Uh, this this is, is like Atlanta. They're, they're not, not going to get blown out though. But this is like Atlanta. I'm I'm done trying to Pete yeah. Carroll greater than Russ. I'm sorry. Pitt Pittsburgh, it's Sunday night football here. A big spot here. Pittsburgh and Brian Flores. Revenge. Minka Fitzpatrick. Revenge. Going down to Miami where their Dolphins are laying seven. Minus 310 on the money line. Pittsburgh plus 250. 45 is the total. Two is back. Uh everything looks looks good. Tyreek is on pace to break Calvin Johnson's That's receiving record, which considering the quarterbacks he's playing with, that dude's fucking good. And considering he's not very tall. True fucking alpha. Hopefully a cameraman doesn't get in his way. Uh might might turn into some trouble. Look, my my gambling instincts say Miami here, but but there's zero fucking chance that I'm laying seven. Well, in the in these Dolphins quarterbacks keep getting knocked out of the game. There has to be something going on here. And then Tua, if he takes You don't think the Steelers know how to get dirty? I mean, who hates who hates Tua more than me? Brian Flores. <laughs> and Brian Flores is going to be calling those plays? Oh, You're telling me he's not oh, going to try and fuck up we're, Tua? We're going to have a bounty. I mean, Tua knocked him down. Bounty he was, gate. He was coaching in Miami, Ryan. Imagine you go from head coach in Miami to fucking linebacker coach in Pittsburgh. That's a lifestyle change. He fucked Brian Flores' life up. And now this is a chance <laughs> for Brian he, Flores to fuck his life he, up. I mean, Flores, he's a dude. He had the the, oh, the nerve to I, sue our Lord and Savior, there, Roger Goodell. You know, a lot of people were saying, Sean, you're crazy. You can't beat up Mike McDaniel. Look, he's three and oh. He's got a you know who can beat up Mike McDaniel. Say, yeah, Brian, <laughs> Brian Flores is about to kick some fucking ass. Linebacker coach for your Pittsburgh Steelers. I am so Is this too is this this stupid stupid obvious? I think it's super chalky in public to take Miami. It's you know, hey, two is back. All right, they're gonna be good again. I don't know, man. Like, it, second biggest, most lopsided spot is Miami. Oh, people are on Miami. I, right. I guess I should probably throw Tampa into that mix, but like the big ones are the Jets. It's just think about this as the public sides this week. The the most public sides, the Bucks. Okay, that makes sense to me. Jets. What? Yeah. Seahawks. Oh what? God. Dolphins. What? Tomlin again, great as a dog, 47, 27 ATS. Dolphins, four, 24 and 42 against the spread uh, versus at home versus teams with losing records since 2003. Like they don't, they don't take care of business. And I think, I think that could be an issue here. Uh, you know, Mika Fitzpatrick's coming back. Pat Fryermuth is coming back. Doing, and it sounds like Kenny Pickett's going to play. I don't even really know what I want quarterback wise. Steelers insider Scott Bowser, yeah, claiming he's going to play. D. Bettis is saying this is a possibly a look at spot for no, Pittsburgh. Stop it! Not when you, I, I think not when you have two wins and you're playing you're a prime not, time game and and you have a D, a linebacker coach with a real chip on his shoulder. Yeah, you're not good. You're not looking ahead to a non-conference game to a team that's in your state. Ref report: uh, Scott Novak is a big away team ref. He loves the Steelers plus seven, right? Here's the two is actually ten and three at home ATS. Now, I, I didn't dig in to see how many times he I was imagine, laying a touchdown. Yeah, not I don't many. think that's like a big favorite thing. But I, 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 I we objectively are probably slow to adopting the idea that two is playing well, right? Like that's like Tyree kill is good, but I, I just I, I think coming off the concussion, zero chance. I think I think it's gonna take him a game. So, no, I well, mean he honestly, could have played last week. You didn't hear Coach McDaniel. He, I don't think he, he cleared, cleared last, last week. week, but they're gonna hold him out one more week. Uh, just they care about to be grade. safe, yeah, because they they love each other. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh all day. Come on, it's always gonna be the Brian Flores revenge spot. We talked about this spot in the off season. Yeah, Monday night football. The Chicago Bears. 
Right, we've had the exact same picks this entire episode. Really? But you haven't the, noticed that? I, I haven't. I haven't been laser focused on your picks, just mine. Shit. Well, just skipping down the goddamn street. The Bears heading to New England. I'm taking New England minus eight before you can say anything. Where where Bill Belichick gets a win, he passes Bear great George Hallis for all time winning his coach. I, I think the only reason they're making this eight is because they're trying to make you think, hey, am I really gonna lay eight points with Bailey yes. Zappy? Yes. And then you have to. The the issue is, or the matchup that is most interesting, because the Bears can rush the passer at times. They're fifth in pass rate, which kind of makes them interesting against certain teams. However, they're 28th in rush DVOA. And we've seen the Patriots lick their chops against teams that that can't stop the run. We saw it with Cleveland. They're just this is a Ramondre. If you're doing a um a showdown DFS slate, you gotta put Ramondre Stevenson in there, right? Minus eight, minus three seventy on the money line. Bears plus two ninety. Thirty nine and a half is the total. Everything you said. Yes. You also have one dimensional team versus Bill Belichick. That's never a good recipe. You have quarterback that's slow at processing against Bill Belichick and and let's not forget young Belichick. Yeah. Sexy Belichick as I like <laughs> to call him. Belichick without Tom Brady as a home favorite of 7 or more, 5 and 1 ATS. Wow, really? Oh my god. They take care I mean What's a staple of a great of a good team, a well coached team? You take care of the trash. Yeah, Chicago's trash. No, and 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 Justin Fields is actually getting like decent time. He's just, um, you know, like I was saying pre draft. Slow processor. He was bad on the whiteboard. Oh, I tried you to warn son people. Of a bitch. I tried to warn you people. Son of a bitch. And shout out to the Bears. I figured I would wait to do this, but uh, you know, J-, J Mark. Shout out to the Fantasy Football Podcast, Old Fashioned Football. He bet me some bourbon that the Bears would beat the Giants. He lost, and so I we now have an autographed bottle of uh, oh, this is Co- awesome. Cody Road, which is an Iowa uh, an Iowa bourbon, straight from J Mark. So thanks to J Mark. Shout out to Cody so, Road. That, that yeah. looks tasty. Sorry for your uh, yeah. We'll have to crack this maybe on the uh, maybe the pregame show, postgame show. recap show. Uh, you don't want to do whiskey in the morning. I do. Then I just pass out. I want to, I want to see most of the afternoon games. So Ryan, you're on the bears plus eight, right? No, we're going to have the exact same picks. This feels bad for Juju. So, right? All right. Where, where, where did we go wrong? Oh, I didn't go wrong. I anywhere. almost took the Packers. Why don't you take the Packers? Come on. You know, you want to take, give it. me the Packers. There you go. Juju has been reset. Breaking news. <laughs> I think we're just both dialed in, Ryan. I recalibrated my laser. I'm ready to go. All right, time for the lock, dog, and tease. Happy birthday. Presented by WinBet. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Kramer, do you want to kick things off here? Whatever you feel more con- you felt you kind of like you jumped the gun on the New England pick, so maybe you go first. And I'll pivot off of that. Okay. That's what we did. You went first last week. Yeah. All right. What are we doing here? I, I, I you know, a lot of two and a half, a lot of six and a half. The teases are pretty easy. Maybe, right. maybe start with your teaser. Be inspired that way. Okay. Uh, Indy plus eight and a half. Generally, you do the tease first. So. No, I do tease last. No, I'm done. I'm saying in the wild. Oh, okay. You might want to do the tease first. Indy plus eight and a half. Appetizer New before the main course. New England <laughs> minus two. And then um uh, I'll take Tampa Bay down to five. Okay, for my dog. Man, I love Seattle. <laughs> How do I not take Seattle? Uh you take Seattle. You're you've turned Seattle into a on the money line. For a guy who was so into Will Grier, you went out, you cheat, cheating on him with another Mountaineer, Gino. Uh, Cleveland plus six and a half as my first lock, and for my second lock, Houston plus seven looks really good. Indy plus two and a half is the correct lock. Locking up Indy back to back weeks. What is going on, Kramer? What do you got? 
Yeah. So I was looking at the Colts and I'm like, should I do it? Motherfucker. Uh, all right. You lied to me because you told me you weren't going to lock up Cleveland and then you went ahead and locked when up Cleveland. When did I say that? Earlier. I, I feel like you said that. Uh, I didn't that, say that, that about that game. That's okay. Uh, lock number one for me is Houston. Convergence yeah. of a lot of trends, like just it. in general. Uh, I like the idea that Lovey Smith's going to have his team coming off the buy and doing things. Uh, then I'm going to hop over. So to the two buy trends were uh, Houston and then Detroit, right? Well, and fading Las and Vegas Indy. and yes, fading Las Vegas and Tennessee, and betting Indy. on Houston and Detroit. In cool. in the case of Houston and Las Vegas, it's one game, so. Uh, pretty pretty strong to go both ways. Tease. We're gonna do San Francisco up to eight and a half. We're gonna do New England down to two. Just making sure we don't have the same. And we're gonna do Indy up to eight and a half, which is that. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Indy out of my tease. Oh, well, you just had the same vibe that I did. I'm gonna put Pittsburgh up to thirteen. I don't I don't like putting my tees with my lock. No, actually, you're right. No, I'll keep it in there. It's it's a good uh yeah. Let's be unorthodox. Give me uh no, no, leave it in there. All right, for my dog. Dog. <sighs> Big exhale. You know, I don't know. I watched that Miami team and there are there were moments where when things were going well, it's easy to say, wow, this McDaniels dude's smart. He's got it going on, but there were times in that game where he just looked lost. Pittsburgh shocks everyone on Sunday Night Football. Woo. Give me the Steelers plus two fifty. Keep going back to that well. Might might be a uh, might be reckless. All right, last lock. Jared Goff and this offense, I think, are going to be able to move the ball. I like it. Plus seven. It was always the two, the two. I, first thing I told you when we started talking about the week, I said I really like the road teams coming off the bye here. And then uh, you argued with me, so then I went and pulled out a whole bunch of data. We figured out it was the right thing to do. Double lock on that on that trend right there. Double dog. What's the four? All right, so, so read off the H card. Houston, Detroit, Indy, Cleveland. I really like Pittsburgh oh. as well. Do is that? Uh, or do you want Seattle? Or or do we go somewhere somewhere else? Uh, I mean, I don't mind. Do I mean? I would say let's let's or we put we. I think we go Pittsburgh. So don't, don't you think so? Uh, I mean, hopefully dogs ride again. But we got Houston plus seven, Detroit plus oh, seven, sh Indy plus two and a half, Cleveland favorite? plus six and a half, Pittsburgh plus seven. Should we throw a favorite in there? What favorites do we like? Arizona? No, I don't want to play Thursday night. Tampa, Denver. Tampa, Denver. <laughs> no. New England. Wait, yeah. neither of us locked up New England. New England I like. Do I want an audible into a New England pick? What what do you think? Well, I know previously when you audibled off your dog last week, that was disastrous results. What was it? What did I do? Oh, I see. You're right. I switched to fucking. You lose. started out with um, the Steelers money line, and you ended up with Chiefs money line. So I would recommend not switching. Good call. Yeah, let's go. First instincts are right. Pittsburgh plus seven. Let's go. And um, I'm gonna already throw it out there. Round robin money line parlay: Pittsburgh, Houston, Seattle. Let's fucking go. No Detroit. Leave Detroit off, right? Yeah. There, Campbell covers. It doesn't win, right? What about Atlanta? Eh. We'll, I, we'll save for the pregame show, but I would say uh, for those for those wondering, Atlanta is a very interesting game to me this week. <laughs> for, from a from a money line, the round robin potential this week is just fucking glorious. I'm on I'm on the plus side of every one of these six and a half or seven point dogs, ex with the exception of New England. Let's fucking do we, do we wheel them all. I might have to. We'll, we'll do. We'll do what the would math. that be? The fact. Uh, the the two, if we did two teamers, we only did the two teamers. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so that would be six factorial five factorial. No, I can't do that math in my head. All right. 
We'll give you the math, but there's going to be some sweet money line round robins on the pregame show, 9 a.m. Pacific, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. We also have our NFL props episode coming up later in the week, aka tomorrow. After that, DFS. DFS has moved to Friday for this week, possibly the foreseeable future. Stay tuned for that. Toss us a nice rating review. If you do that, you get a chance to win a hundred dollar SGPN merch gift card. All you got to do screenshot you sending in your review, submit it via the SGPN app. You are good to go. And also, NFC Beast. 15% off everything in the SGPN merch store. Let's go, baby. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stagging the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Uh, sorry, I was trying to figure out how many bets it would be. 15, Sean. 15 if we were did this. 16 round robin, two all the way. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs> <laughs>